I want to thank all of you because you're the ones I want to talk to. You're the ones I want to hear from. As we organize to defend our constitution, constitutional democracy, and ensure that our elections are truly representative. You are the ones who care about our democracy and guard our freedom, especially the right to vote. You are the ones who are aware of the ongoing threat to democracy posed by lies and disinformation, and are the ones willing to stand up and speak for our freedoms. We, the people, have the right to elect our leaders and to expect the results of those elections to be respected and honored. Trump filed some 60 lawsuits and never once did he prove to the satisfaction of any of the judges that he appointed or to the Supreme Court that there was any substantial basis to his claims that the election had been stolen. We now know that from the select committee yesterday that he planned his actions well before the event and he sat watching television while his supporters bludgeoned Capitol Police officers for hours. He did nothing as officers suffered career ending and in some cases life ending injuries. Trump must answer to them, to those officers, and to the evidence and the allegations and the testimony. He must respond. Trump must testify. Put up or shut up. No one needs to believe a word he is unwilling to say under oath. That's why he won't do it. Because you know why he won't do it? You guys know why? Why? He's a liar. Is he guilty? <laughs> because he'll have to do exactly what his closest associate did, which was to take the Fifth Amendment. Because if he talks about his involvement, he will be incriminated. So, did you, did you guys see the hearing yesterday? How many of you guys saw the hearing yesterday? Awesome. Did your neighbor see the hearing yesterday? You guys know if your neighbor saw the hearing yesterday? How about your friends? How about your friends? Yes. Have your friends watched it? Yes, my friend watched did it. Did you talk to the store clerks, to local business owners about it? You know, I do. Tell them about it. Talk about it. Tell them to watch it. This is what we're doing here today. We are reaching out to our neighbors. We are reaching out to you to talk about the attack on our nation last year and the ongoing threat to democracy here at home and around the globe. One thing we know, we will be doing this event right here on January 6th next year. We want it to be big, we want it to be successful, and we need all of your help. And we want you guys to be involved in that. Um, we also have monthly meetings where we discuss important issues on Zoom uh, related to democracy. We produce the Truth and Democracy podcast that educate the public about disinformation and how to uh, think critically about the information they receive and to educate the public about the threat to democracy and what people are doing about it. So now let's hear from others, our other heroes here today, who want to talk to us about democracy and about fighting for democracy locally, nationally, and globally. Thank you very much for coming. We the people, you here, are the ones that are the important ones that you can lead. We know exactly what happened and they cannot be forgotten. So for that reason, I support all of you in being here tonight. I met a lovely lady today. Um, her name is Rose Scott. I told her that she has a lovely name. And she is, is uh, someone that is going to uh, do something that uh, I think is very important. Rose Scott, thank you. remember this.
Okay, hi. Um, so I'm retired now, but when I, for the last 21 years, I worked as um, a geologist, an engineering geologist at the state of California. Everyone who works for civil service, and like me in the state, we have to take an oath of office. So um, I no longer work for the state, but I'm, um, you know, I'm a retiree. I still collect my um, state check. So I, I will renew my oath today. Anyone who would like to renew an oath, if you work for civil service or if you're a veteran or um, active service, please join in. I, I Rose, R Richard, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, or affirm, or affirm, that I will support, that I will support, and defend, and defend, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California. I forgot to tell you that my name is Maggie Bell, and I have been told by many people that my I should not be involved in anything to do with, with January the 6th. Well, you know what? I am my own person. And I'm not going to let anybody tell me or anybody try to put the fear of life in me that they will not endorse me, they will not support me uh, in any way, shape, or form. We the people, you here, are the ones that are the important ones that you believe. We know exactly what happened and it cannot be forgotten. So for that reason, I support all of you in being here tonight. Our next guest is a, a good friend of mine, and his name is Rolando Cano. And what I love about Rolando Cano is that he speaks his mind. Here in the city of Whittier, we have four districts. And out of the four districts, we only had two ballot boxes and uh, two ballot boxes and two voting centers. One in District 2 and District 3. District 1 and District 4 were completely forgotten. And the reason why, they don't want people to engage. Our city government would want people to engage in voting, but guess what? In the city of Whittier, there's this secret. There's, it's called voter suppression. They don't want the people to vote. And Rolando Cano uh, has no problem coming up and telling the city government, hey, this is wrong, and we need more people like him and like us. Rolando Cano. Hi, thank you, folks. I really want to welcome everyone here simply because it, it does take time to get away from everyday life and come out and, and share and learn from, from each other. Uh, one of the fundamentals that we all uh, grew up with was community. Anything that we did always consisted of a neighbor coming out, helping out, someone taking out the trash, or we do offer help. That seems to have been lost recently because of all the things that have happened. You know, we're aware of what happened on January 6th, and it was a tragedy. You know, let's call it what it was, which was a terrorist attack on our capital. Uh, I, for one, am not so interested in the party that was responsible, but in the actual criminals that walked past that line and committed a terrorist act against our nation. One, something that we have to make clear is that we got to stop identifying them as some kind of opposition. They're a threat. That's what they did, that's what they created. I had the pleasure of speaking uh, on January 6th last year, and like Maggie said, not one council member here in the city came out to represent, or to give an opinion, or to stand up for the people that they're supposed to represent. Regardless of party affiliation, someone should have come out and stated that that was not American. You do not interfere with the governmental process. And if any of you have been watching the news, what's happened in LA City Council, what happens in our local council, we get censorship, we get our rights violated in the courts of the Brown Act, and a lot of times because we lack some information that the, that the local government does not present to us, we overlook them. But we have to take action. 